Okay, it's coming along pretty good. I've got a little bit more material over here. And at this point, I'm going to reach for the big guns. This is, as you've seen it before, my Automac HCT-30. We're going to make some short work of this uh, rough out. <laughs> That's actually uh, a nice quick way to do it, and it saves your wrist, it saves your elbows. It's just, I love that tool for doing some of this rough out. I'll get to a spot where, where it gets a little thick like that, and that thing is like a brush cutter. Bush hog, you just get in there and it just takes it right out. I think it's worth it just to have a tool that can do that, especially when you're when you're carving these things as frequently as I am. Okay. pretty good. I think I'm going to take a little bit of time with my narrow gouge and just kind of work on this staff a little bit, cleaning this staff up. going to be a little difficult to get in here to do some cleaning up, but there's always the right tools sitting up there to do it. These carvings that I make are pretty sturdy too. I don't have a lot of little things sticking out of them, so if they happen to take a spill off a mantle, one of the grandkids or a cat hops up there, you know, these little guys are troopers. They're going to take a hit. Because there's not a lot of delicate parts hanging off of it.
even though I kind of like the way that robe is sort of, he's got his staff right on the base. It's, this is going to be a snowy sort of perch. And I kind of like the way it, uh, the robe is flowing around that. Just another way to give it a, a sense of motion. Okay, I'm going to do some nitpicking up in here. Right in this area, get this cleaned out. Maybe define a little bit more of this. You know, with this gouge right here, I'm going to go in and clean up the base like this. And then I'm going to come in here with this narrower tool. And I'm going to get a little more definition up in here. He looks a little broad-shouldered, so I think I might take him in just a little bit on this side and that side. It looks a little heavy in the shoulders. So I'm going to work on doing that. This, this, a little bit in this area. Redefining this a little bit. And he's actually coming along pretty good. Have to decide how much of a hump I want in his back. I think that's pretty good so far. Okay, this is where he is at the moment. And I decided to, I had enough room up here, I thought, to go ahead and give him a cape. So I'm going, I penciled that in. I'm gonna give him a little bit of a cape. And just always cleaning something up here. When I see it, just have to pick at it. Wanna clean that up a little. Then what I want to do is coming along the base here, maybe I'll do that now. I just want to give a little more definition to this robe. U-gouge is perfect for the job. When the wood starts to tear like that, I usually just flip it around because it'll just keep on ripping if you don't. And I'll use this deeper gouge to kind of give a little more detail to those cuts that I just made. And then as you look at it, I kind of like to take this knife and just kind of shave a little bit off. So when you look at it, you have that graduated effect. Go with the wider U gouge up in here. And the same sort of thing over here. So when you look at it, I'm going to take this little edge off just enough to give it a little bit more visual character when you look at it. So that way, when you look at him, you see this crease and then that crease, and it sort of layers it a little bit.
and it gives it a little bit of motion. Kind of like there's a little breeze that's blowing. Need another crease in here. But like this. Perfect. Define it a little bit. See how it wants to keep on going? Well, I'm not going to let it do it. Boom. So I've got some creases in this bag as well. couple of creases or three right at the top of the bag. So I think I'll give the top of this bag a little more shape like that. need to somehow get into this a little bit. Time for some of these little gouges. handiwork. OK. 
Okay, he is coming along. So I think what I'm going to do is shape out this uh, collar here that I've added with this gouge. And I'm just going to use a light touch just to outline it enough. I'm going to go all the way around and then I'm going to sort of create a stop cut there. And I'm going to use this tool just to pop out some of that wood like that. And I'll come back and clean it up like this. But that'll give a little definition to that coat right there. And maybe what we'll do is give it a new texture too. We'll give it like a little bit of a fur texture. And I'll show you how we do that. Okay, still working through this Santa. One thing I want to do down here that I kind of forgot about was I'm going to take this chisel and just give a little more detail to some of these creases in the rope, like this. Sort of uh, playing on that idea of giving the robe a little bit of motion. This is just undercutting the robe a little bit. But see how that gives it a nice little sort of effect right there? Just a little undercutting does it. You just kind of lift up. And then right where that crease gets deeper, you bring the knife down. Then you undercut it. So right here at the high part of the crease, you kind of lift up and then go down. I think that gives a little, a little more character to the robe. It makes it a little more fidgety when you go to paint it, but I always try to keep in mind that these things are going to be hanging around for a while, so they are worth a little extra detail that makes them stand apart from A lot of these other resin carvings that you see that are painted kind of sloppy and I mean not not to mention the fact that they're plastic right it's kind of nice to make something that uh, people are going to appreciate for a long time to come Okay, so you can see it's sort of creating a nice little effect in here. Sort of a, a sense of motion with this robe. So I went ahead and I put cuffs on this old guy. And I just used the V-gouge and came in here like that. And I did the same thing up here to this, uh, this sort of... Uh, I guess you would call it. So to texture it, I'm just going to take my trusty little U-gouge and I'm going to make little divots. Like that. Almost at a right angle. And then it's like you're taking a shovel and just kind of picking and poking. And there is a method to it. You want to kind of make these little divots follow a, uh, a 
a path, if you will, or a sort of direction. Adds a nice little detail to the carving. So what I might do with this guy is this will get a tan, light tan paint, and then I think the brim is going to be cream. Um, and the reason why I, I don't want to texture these cuffs is because uh, I've been on a holly kick lately where I take and I, I paint the holly in. So I'll do little holly leaves that kind of alternate one this way, one that way, that way, that way. Berries under it. And it just looks really nice. Well, I can't do that when it's got this texture to it. But the texture does create an interesting quality to the carving. So I'm going to finish doing the texturing. And then I think the next step up is the beard. What are we going to do about that? I've got lots of different methods to use for the beard. I don't know, something like that is kind of nice. So we'll have to figure the beard out. And then I think that it's... It needs to divot in a little bit more, so I might take some material out here. Just kind of have it divot in so it just doesn't come, boom, straight down. Naturally, a, a beard would kind of follow the chin and then kind of come back out. So I'm going to texture. I'll probably take this gouge, redefine the brim up here, and then start working on, on the mustache and the beard. Okay, I'm currently working on the brim, and as you can tell, the brim doesn't quite look right. It needs to go a little bit deeper. And I pretty much encounter this every every time I carve a Santa, which is not a problem. You just take the gouge out, go a little deeper. Got the bunch of many rattles here. I'm pretty good at tuning noise out anyway. Sorry if that's annoying, but I think I got to be this old by not being able to tune things out that I didn't like. Well, let's see. So, I'm just going to take this and remove that material. So I'm going to keep working on this, <clears throat> and this is going to be, this area right in here is where the, uh, the tassel is going to be for the cap. So this is where I like this bench. You can get this in here and really bear down on it, because this wood on the top of the cap is not easy carving. This wood does not want to give up.
cup is looking a little better, but I'm still going to take a little more out right up here. I guess it's just a matter of preference. Okay, I'm going to keep nitpicking at this, but eventually, to, once I get this pom-pom or whatever the heck it is, tassel on the top, to find a little bit more, I'm going to draw it out like this and come in here with the heavy ga gouge, the, the fat gouge, and just kind of work around that. Then I'll use the smaller tools to undercut and do a little more definition on this, this tassel at the top of the cap. But he's coming along not so bad. It's starting to look pretty good. Then after that, the beard is coming up next. But I've got a little more shaping to do up here. Kind of take this in a little bit, too. Okay, so here's what he's looking like. Finally got that cap. I've got a little cleanup to do around here but as far as the beard goes I've got this sketched in like this and I'm just going to follow those lines thing I want to do is give a little more depth Kind of like I did over here, where I wanted that robe to have a visual effect, where I kind of cleaned off this one side of the robe. I'm going to do the same kind of thing to this. I'm going to pick one side, this side that I'm on, and just clean up the other side. Of that cut that I made. And then when you look at it, you can kind of see it sticking up a little bit here. There's a million ways to kind of detail a beard. But when you've got this sort of a crook here, then the decision comes, okay, now what do I do with this? I think I'm going to just make it a little bit more of a sort of like a, a curl in the beard. Take this new gouge, just give the beard a little more detail.
gosh, just imitating the look of hair can be a whole separate course, I think, when it comes to doing Santas. You know, how to replicate that flow is not as easy as it looks. But I use these U-gouges, and when I'm carving with them, I sort of turn them at the same time. And it gives you a different kind of a cut. But you don't want to get to the end of a a decent carving, and then have a beard that looks kind of wonky. So it's not a bad idea just to sit and practice carving beards until you get a style that you like. I personally think that every square inch needs to have some sort of a tool mark on it. Otherwise, when you paint it, it sort of stands out. So I have to imagine, how does the hair move around this corner right here? Kind of like that. And then what you want to do very carefully and move in the sand at the same time add a little more texture like that but the more realistic obviously the better so that's why I spend a little more time. I mean, you could just take the knife, the gouge, and just do a few little quick cuts, but the beards really stand out, so let me give this a little more of a curve. Got a little bit of wood in here that just hanging in there that shouldn't be. There you go. Get on out of there. And if you need to, these dockyard tools are pretty good at getting up in here. A little more detail like that. Gosh, I think this whole set of tools for the dockyard tools was only 20 bucks. The steel, like I said, is not, I said this in a previous video, is not the best, but you know, it holds an edge and they're very delicate and they're very nimble. So I, I do recommend these dockyard tools. Okay, so now we've got to do the mustache. Now for the mustache, you can either go with a gouge like this, a V-gouge, or you can go a little bit, you know, wider with something like that. I think I'll go with the wider. This one I usually use for the six-inch Santas. 
take little cuts like this. And then here, this is the special sauce. You get that U gouge, you go in between it like that. Makes a nice looking mustache. Looks like you care. There we go. So the next step, I think, at this stage is I think I'm going to carve in a little bit of an eyebrow. I normally don't do that. Six inch sanders don't qualify. Partly because I just can't see what I'm doing at that level. But he's got a little more to work with here. Go like that. Out come the dockyard tools. That's a little too narrow. That's pretty good. And you just follow the outside. Like that. Very careful. Don't mess the eyes up, whatever you do. Don't mess them up. You spent too much time getting these eyes right. Go easy. Take the bigger gouge, get that chunk out of the middle. Maybe a little bit right here. Why not? Do an easy little stop cut back there, and then you're going to remove some of that. Just like that. Let's get that tiny little dockyard tool, the smallest one, and just give it a little texture. That'll stand out when you get some paint on it. Lightest touch. Same thing on this side. And then with the sandpaper, I'll clean this up just a little bit. Go with a nice light touch. Take that nose off just a bit. Some people say, why don't you put nostrils in there? Ah, I just don't, I don't know. I just don't like them. I just don't find it appealing. I suppose if I was doing a bigger Santa, I might. But not on this one. All right. He's looking pretty good. I'm sure you'll... Just take some time here and once you finish. It's called the nitpicking stage. You just want to look at them and flip them around. 
Oh, you know what I forgot? The cuffs. I forgot the cuffs. What are we going to do about that? Well, if I can find the tool, I guess I'll just go with this. You've got to do that. Make the cuffs look real. And you come in here with this little guy. Okay. And as I mentioned before, you could also put some lines under the eyes with one of those dockyard tools that will impart a little bit more age to the old guy, I guess. And it looks nice. It, it does hold some stain. So I don't know. Maybe we'll just do that now. people want to look younger but this old guy is gonna look a little older careful around those eyes mess them up. And then you want to take out just the other side very carefully like that. Gosh, you're looking pretty good, Santa. I do put these up for sale, but, you know, I really don't mind if they hang out for a while. I really don't. I haven't done any gnomes yet. I'll, I think I'll do a video on carving gnomes. I really like those little guys. I'm, I'm actually sad when I sell a gnome because, to me, they're just like such neat little little things to have hanging around in your house, and you can leave them out all the time. Not that I don't leave Santa's hanging out all the time, but the gnomes are really neat to have hanging around. I do try to make sure they get good homes, though. I'm just kidding. Yeah, about this stage of the process, uh, I get a little uh, eager to kind of wrap up the carving here. All right, so I think we're doing okay with this little guy. He's got a nice look. He's going to outlive me. I can, I can feel it. You won't be ending up in some sort of little thrift store, Santa. I can guarantee it. We've put enough work into you. All right. So the next step is just nitpicking. And then I'm going to do some sanding. Light sanding with that 220 grit sandpaper. And I'll come back and I'll show you what he looks like. But so far, I think he's looking pretty good. A little clean up in there.
Well, I've got them all sanded up here. And again, when you're sanding, the object, especially on the beard, is just to take some of the edges off. And then I use a nice piece like this, and I get in here and I really, I try to get as smooth as I can on the face. Get in here like this, crease that paper over. I get this uh, aluminum ceramic paper, really holds a crease. Get in there like this. Again, you want a light touch on the things like this. Just kind of smooth out the rough edges. Get up under here, clean this stuff out. All that jazz, and you're done. What are you looking at me like that, Santa? I think you, I think you look pretty good. I did the best I could. Well, folks, I want to thank you uh, for watching this video. You know, who knows when you're carving, what is the weather doing outside? Who knows? You just get lost in this stuff, which is uh, the benefit of having a real good hobby like this. So it's the cheapest therapy around, folks. And I want to thank you for joining me, and I'll look for you next time. And if you enjoy it, like everybody says, click like, follow, and click your heels, too, while you're at it. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, folks. Till next time.